fuck niggas. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just getting my tap. This is where I'm going with it. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. This is Chris Gotti Lorenzo, and I'm back giving him the business. You heard? Shout out my partner, Don De Niro, who's not with me. Kewala, Kewala. He's out in Miami selling his books. You know what I'm saying? And this is a big deal. Go get that book, The Formula, 16 Lessons in Life. Absolutely will change yours if you apply these lessons to be a, live a fruitful and prosperous life from a mental, spiritual, <laughs> physical level. It's so dope, man. I love the book. Congratulations, De Niro. Can okay, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here with the one and only. How do you want me to say your name? Arthur Everlast? Arthur Everlast. Arthur Everlast in the it, building, it, it, man. It, yes, it, yes, yes. It means the I got him behind the mic. Pause for the uh, first time. I've been telling him I need to interview his ass. <laughs> I got his ass now. Yeah. I'm, look, I'm wearing the shirt. I want to yeah, make sure yo, I'm leaving the wanna... mic out the way. I want the people to see it. That's yeah. what this is. This is what it's all about right here. Real always wins. Real and I want to thank you for that support, wins. brother. Ah, you I know what it is. Thank you for that support. That's you know dope. what it is. Real always wins. I love that, wins. that 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 slogan, regardless, because you know, I hope real always wins. That I I made that up because it makes you think. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It, when people, you know see what that? it makes me think. I'm gonna tell you what it makes me think. What? Does real always win? That's what it makes me think when I read it. it may, I want to believe real always wins because I'm a real motherfucker. And I'm like, yes, I'm winning. But I want to make sure that there are other real people and they get the same flowers and gets to win as well because there's a big thing to say about being real. Mm -hmm. At least in my mind, just being real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, but fake doesn't always win. You know what I'm I know. Saying? The fake it till you make it is the slogan they use, right? Yeah, and that shit don't work all the time. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Nah. I'm but not with that. If you sit back and you really analyze R A W. R A W. Oh really? man, you yeah. just brought me back to Big Daddy Kane. Hey man, listen. Ooh, wait. Listen, man. Shout out Big Daddy Kane. He just did shout the vibes on Icon with Ja Rule. You know, shout out Ja. You know what I'm saying? That's my brother. Okay. He just did that whole uh vibe setting, which he performs like with like band and Oh, yeah, Crazy on Icon. Yeah, that, that yeah. should be fire. I don't know if yeah. you got to see the Raekwon shit nah. and Ghost. They killed it. Yeah. You know, yeah, they killed it. So, man, shout out Jai. He's doing his thing with that shit. Yes, yes. But dope. real always wins. Raw, yeah. R A W. Yes, that's um one one of five books that I've released. I'm going to show the book. This is the raw book right here. <laughs> This is the raw book right here. Let yeah. me make sure it's right, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's Real show the back so they know that I really wrote it. No. Yeah, see my pictures oh, back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah check that it. one yeah, out, see? Yeah. See, because people be fronting out here. See, fake doesn't always win. Real wins. <laughs> there you go. You, know you looking saying? like a pastor right there, bro. Hey, man, I had to preach the gospel <laughs> to the streets. You know what I'm saying? But what got you into actually writing books? Because that's oh. something that, again, that's an art form, really. Writing is it's not easy. I don't think you're a, um, a Harvard-educated um, nah. author. You know nah. what I'm saying? Like where you learned English and everything. Because I want to nah. inspire people or kids or whatever that might be hearing this podcast or seeing it, that they could do it too. What got you started writing books? Honestly, I had, I've, I had read a lot of books. I was locked up at the time mm -hmm. in New York State. And so you you was you was reading a lot while you was inside is what you're saying. Yeah, and I didn't read nothing when I was in the street. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was in the street in the streets. So I didn't I the only thing I read in the street was probably like the newspaper every day. Wow. Cuz I stayed reading the newspaper. I grew the up funnies. doing that. Nah, the, the real, I want to, <laughs> from the front to back, word, Chris, I, I read the whole thing. Nah, that's dope. I got I never, to see what's going on. You know, it's funny, I used to read the paper, then I stopped because the beginning, I only did sports, uh, because the, the the news was nothing but negative, mm. and I didn't like to keep reading all of that shit. Nah, and I, I you know, I, I believe, it. you know, the older but, I got, I really realized the propaganda that's involved with, let's say, uh, yeah. newspapers. yeah. The business of You know, it. when I went through my trial, I'll give you something with the newspapers in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, the Daily News is the New York police. The NYPD controls the Daily News. Right. The Washington Post, okay? The New York Post, sorry. The New York Post is controlled by the feds. The New York Times is controlled by the feds. 
Mm-hmm. So when they have an agenda, they they got to write what they wanted in those publications, mm-hmm. if you understand. And if you, yeah. ever, if you ever look at both of them, because we used to get, my mother and father would always get both papers every day, the Times and the Post, every day. To this day, my mother gets both papers every day. She's 89. Shout out, Nene. Yeah, so at the end of the day, <laughs> we had both papers in the, in the house, and you would see the same article, but you see it's written differently. Mm-hmm. That's when you realize. But when I went through my trial, I really seen it. Yeah. Because yeah. I know what was real or truth or not truth. And if I knew when the feds wanted their agenda, they wrote the article differently versus this the police department. Yeah. And I'm telling you, this shit is fucked up. So they yeah. get to dictate that shit. Yeah, I, and I, people, I if you don't know it. it, when you in the, if you in that New York Post, the feds is on your ass. Trust me when I tell you, hmm. they coming. Hmm. <laughs> but I, 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 um, I was reading a lot. I read a lot of books, man. At one time, man, it had to have been fucking like over 200 books. That's and, nice. That's what's up. And I was like. I had tried, I was writing rhymes. Mm. That's where it all started from. I went to the box. They sent my ass to the box, and right, you Chris? Became, hold on, hold on. You, hold on. <laughs> no, listen, yeah. I, yo, I just, they send, you know, they send you to the box and you don't got shit in that cell but a piece of paper and a pencil. And you started writing And rhymes. I was sitting there bored as hell, man. I got tired of talking to my two neighbors and I was like, fuck it, let me write a rhyme. And I wrote some shit. And I do got you on remember the game? your rhyme? Hell fucking no. Come on, man. Hell I know no. you do. Nah, that that shit was years ago, man. And I, I spit the shit on the game. Dude was like, yo, I didn't know you know how to rhyme. And I was like, ah, I just wrote that. He's like, word, keep writing. And that keep writing. Is what hit you. Yeah, that shit hit me. You know what I'm saying? I just kept writing. I was writing poetry, rhymes, and I tried to write a book, but I went to the kept going to the box, cause you know, all this bullshit up there. And then one day I just sat there and I seen True to the Game. Mm. I was reading True to the Game and I was like, and I was reading about her in the um in the magazine, the source or something like that, right? right? And I'm like, this girl is selling her books out the trunk of her car? And I was like, like You damn. could do that? Well, and I was, yeah, I was like, well, you could do that shit? Yeah. And I was like, damn. I was like, yo, at the time, I had like probably like eight years left on, my, on my joint. So I was like, I was like, damn, if I make it out of here, what the fuck I'm going to do? And I'm like, yo, I should try to write a book. If I could write that shit, I could sell it. I could sell it out the trunk of my car. Right. And But I was like, damn, I don't know business. So the fucking a teacher walked up on, you know, I'm in a box, so the teacher got to come to your cell every week or whatever. Sure. She stops there. I had my GED, so she didn't need to talk to me. But she was like, do you want anything? Like, want something in business or something like that? I was like, well, you got that? And she would bring me a chapter of the business book every week or every two weeks. And I would copy the shit. Yeah. Because I had to give it back to her. You know what I'm saying? Hey, she, she, so I'm like, damn, I need this fucking shit. I need this information. You know what I'm saying? So I had to sit there, copy that shit. And that's how I learned it. Sat there and copied the whole business book. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Every you, week. Hold on, hold on. When you say copy, you wrote it down. Yes, wrote it down. On Man, pen, I see that. See the young, you youngins out there, that's the old way. Yeah, that's, that's how we had bad, to do it. Man. We Hell have yeah. encyclopedias, and we have to write it down because we didn't own the encyclopedia. We had to give it uh, back. Bro, to you got to give it back. <laughs> so yeah. you had to write it down. Nigga, yeah. fingers hurt. Fingers hurting, yo, uh, for writing shit down facts. so much. And, and that's part of the reason I wasn't good in school. That's just part of the reason. School never interests me. I never felt... Too much writing. It was a lot of writing. And it also, the reason was... It was was, typing. Again, it never stimulated me. It didn't challenge me. I would walk in classes, didn't study, take the test, get 80s, 75s, 80s, without trying. Yeah, so you're like, If I studied, I know I'm getting 90s to 100s. That's not even an issue. So, But I would not... Only problem I had in school was writing, homework. Mm. So I had my man, you know... Write my homework. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was go. definitely doing that from young, getting someone to do that shit. But I don't, you know, we had to, for all you younger people, we didn't have Google. Well, <laughs> we didn't have Google. Well, everything I learned, I learned from a book at that time because yeah. it was just. You had to read it. I and then not only it. did you read it, you had to understand it. Comprehension. Well, and um, I had to build with other dudes to get that 
kind of understanding and comprehension because yeah. I don't know. I'm just reading. You're reading shit words you know, and then yeah. you're putting it, you had to put it to action with right. other so people. Now I got to talk to this dude to make that it make sense. Maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he makes sense, but whatever. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It just it works. It helps your brain. Sure, it helps your brain. So sure. all of that help made me sit down. I wrote "Real Always Wins." I believe that was my first one I wrote full length. Right? It yeah. took me about. That took me about eight months to write that. That's what's and, um This is over 200 pages. Yeah. All my books is uh, like over 200 or 300 pages. Except That's... for my poem book, my poetry book. Uh... Some of your rhymes? Nah, it was a, um, it's called The Poem Song. It's, uh, it's on Amazon. Who's your Kindle. favorite rapper? My favorite rapper is Nas, man. Nas, you writing rhymes. You thought you was Nas inside, didn't you? Nah, I mean, Nas just, he knew how to spit things in ways that other dudes didn't. Yeah. I mean, Big was my favorite rapper. I understand. But Nas. But it's a Queens thing, maybe. I don't know. I'm from Queens. I don't know. A little Queens thing with it. But mean, Nas catalog is longer. He's been out here longer. He's been with me longer. You know what I'm saying? He spoke to Big, you more. Yeah. He spoke to you more. He spoke more. to me more. <laughs> Big loved him. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but Big, we got lost cut short. him. We yeah. Got cut short. So yeah. that's where that came from. Um, that's part of my reason I never make. I can't make him number one. He don't got the body of work. Oh, Big, right? In order to have be the number one spot, you have to have the body of work. Yeah, because a dude like Nas has been out here and he's been able to capitalize shout on out, that. Shout out Esco, man, Nas and shit. Uh, he did a great documentary with Supreme. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just want to shout him out. Shout Supreme out. Hold your head, boy. Well, uh, shout out Supreme. Yeah. Um, but that, I got Real Always Wins. Uh, I got Raw 2, which is Win is Never Quit and Quit is Never Win. Mm. I have Journey to the Kingdom of Soul, which is actually the first book that I self-published. Journey to the Kingdom of Soul is a fantasy book. It's a black fantasy. It's about a, a princess and her, her brother, the prince. You saying a black woman can't be a princess? Well, no. I mean, <laughs> well, the, the, fantasies, the fantasies that have been highly published. I'm not sure. going to say because this world is so big. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm probably the only one that did it, but I know that I mix hip hop with mine. Yeah. I made some of the characters from I used people that was in the industry as some of the main characters. So for instance, Papa Big. I heard used, you. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Papa Big is the uh the king of the brook. Of the brook. Of the brook. Okay. And, and um, the industrial army wants to come and industrialize the uh, their town or their their civilization. Oh. So it's the book is mainly about that. It's about this army trying to come in and change the culture of the people in the land. Man, so this is all made believe up in Arthur Everlast's brain. Yo, man, it's a lot of um. Did you do stuff. drugs? What drugs? I'm asking, like I'm seeing nah. if this is where you drew your creativity from. Nah, brother, I where does the creativity come the from? Just I smoke weed? all the weed mm -hmm. in the world, and that's it. But did you write these while you was inside? Because you couldn't yes. be smoking inside. You wasn't smoking weed inside. Yes, I was. Yes, you was. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. boss. <laughs> 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 Okay, <laughs> heard you. I'm sorry. You know, some days you, yeah. some days it's good, and some days it's not there. You heard? Yeah. You know, you, yeah. I can't. I I couldn't go to the store like I can now. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's on the corner. The store it's, is right it's, there. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. You could walk in the store, but there, you know, had to wait or whatever. Whatever. It's all good. But actually, in there, I couldn't. I went and smoking right. I wrote all of my shit natural. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what if, I'm asking. If not, if I smoked in jail, I was sitting back watching TV or something, yo. So, but you, <laughs> so you wrote everything not high. Yeah, and uh, it, because my brain was just clicking when I'm I realized this. I'm trying to just hear this. where this creativity came from. It's just part of you. Has you always been creative, like that? Nah, well, nah, not. Nah, I mean, you you developed it while you was in jail. Yeah. When it, when it came to writing, it yeah. probably came from reading all them other books. I think it's a bloodline thing. 
came from my grandmother and through my father and like that. Okay. My grandmother was the real book person, writing, reading. My so father, it's in your DNA. my father wrote scripts. He wrote screenplays. Okay. He filmed his own movie. Right. Um, and then I came along and I kind of like took the ball. He never taught me none of this shit. He my didn't father didn't nothing. teach me none of this. You know, people don't know. Uh, if in case they don't know, Ever is my one of my head content creators for Adventure Music and giving him the business. So that's why I wanted to put him in front of the mic. He's behind the scenes making sure all the edits come out right and everything. So, you know, if anybody has a problem with what you see, that's the man we got to talk to. <laughs> I'm just letting y'all know right now. He's the one we going to get. Yeah, yeah. So, but Ever's yeah. the one handling all of that. And it's like he wrote these books, and I always support, again, independent artists. He, this is a form of an artist. Yeah, I'm an independent so, artist all day. All day, and I'm like, let's do it. So I was just happy you came and got behind the mic and paused, you know what hey, I'm saying? Man. Listen, man, I'm trying to, you know, I mean, hip hop is is me, man. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in hip hop. And the way how I know how to express it is through writing good stories for people to read and to watch on TV. You know, I'm going to have to read uh, the rest of these books because I want to see if your aggression, because you, you're a very aggressive person. I don't know if you oh, know that. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I want to see if that aggressiveness is in the writing, <laughs> if that follows through in the writing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Nah, man. I mean, my writing styles, it depends on what I'm talking about because I write so many different things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could write a fantasy. I could write a, a, a street hood story. So let I me ask a question. If you're inside, right, mm. in, in your, you're in jail, and how would someone find these books? On Amazon, on in jail Kindle. they could they could order from Amazon. I believe so. I believe. I know in music we do JPay, and that's how it is. And everything on JPay has to be clean, right? It's very weird. I don't know if it's the same in with books because I with mean, JPay they don't want music. My books in there, and okay. then and then a lot of a uh, lot of women that was coming through. Like I would uh, sell to women that was going up to the jails, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would bring them, but at one time I had a problem. People was beefing because they were saying that they wouldn't let the, the book in the in the jails because it had the gun on the cover. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, That's yo. That's what I'm trying to explain with JPay. I said, come on, man. I said, come on, man. Like, nah, them, I said, nah, something, something ain't right because at the end of the day, I watched this white dude write Sex Money Murder and they, they allowed that shit all in the jails. You know right. what I'm saying? And he had a gun on that cover. You feel me? Right. And I'm like, and it's sex, money, murder. And I'm like, yo, first of all, I already know that white Sounds dude don't like know Sounds like life Pete. to me. He, he, don't, he don't know Pete, so I don't know how he got that story. But at the end of the day. Or how he took that title. See, he probably, yeah. he just took the name because he knows it's affiliated with Pete, like you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's the difference. Like, so it's, it's almost like what James calls a culture vulture. Right, yeah, yeah, that's exact. Yo, and you know some funny shit? Because I was coming through an airport one day, and I wanted to, um, you know, I move around. Yeah. So I go in the airport, it's a bookstore in there. I'm going in there, you know, I meet them, I'm you know, trying to see how I get my books in there. You know what I'm saying? And they tell right. me, you know, do this, that, and the third, or whatever they told me that day. But I turned around, and I seen that Sex, Money, Murder book stacked up in there. And I was like, yo, I can't believe this shit, man. He's getting it moving. This dude is all over the fucking place. Maybe who he knows. Yes. It's not, you know. I need to know somebody. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for a publicist or somebody. You know what I'm okay. saying? You know why? Because I have Journey to the Kingdom of Soul book two. Yes. What's this one about? This is the same. The, the, see, this the fantasy. whole, the this whole is thing. fantasy. Yes. The whole, the whole storyline is... Timos wants to take over the soul of the people. You know what I'm saying? And in order to get to the soul of the people, he has to go and get it from the kingdom of soul and it's being guarded by Queen Mary Jane. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know who that is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the queen of hip-hop soul. But um, at the end of the day... <laughs> Mary Jane! <laughs> she's guarding it. Shout out Mary J. Blige, she's, yo. The yeah, queen. She, yo, shout out to the queen, man. That's right. Yo, she, uh, it's your ode to her. Yeah, man. I I mean, 
She's guarding it. Why you was locked and, and, up? And the, and the ill shit is her general is is not general. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but this all this ode to Mary J. Blige is all why you locked up uh, inside. Nah, it was um, thinking about the queen. Nah, it was all about hip hop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Know. Mar- you, I listen to a lot of Mary, man. I listen to a lot of Mary. You Heard know? you. That's the one thing about me when I'm writing. I gotta listen to music. You know what I'm saying? I gotta have my flow going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I'm in the street, now I can smoke and I can write and I can do music. But when I was in jail, it was none of that. Couldn't was, do that. Now nah, I was, well, you don't have it every day. Like, right, right. It was limited. limited. Yeah, so it's like when you get it, it's party time. It ain't even work time. This, right. this shit here was work. You know what I'm saying? How long did it take you to write a book? Journey, uh... Real always wins. This first one right here. That one took me eight months. Twenty two hundred plus pages. That one took me eight months. Eight months. To the write next it. one I wrote after that was Cash Flow. Cash Flow took me six months. After that I wrote Never Let Your Guard Down. That took me about four months. Then after that, that's when I came up with the story of Journey to King of Soul. Soul. And I was like, because I got to come different. I got to do something different. And you wrote two books about that. You, you basically, that that's... I wrote three books about that. That's a trilogy. You wow. know what I'm saying? And I just went went crazy with that. And I wrote book one in like three, four months. And I wrote that at night while in the daytime I was writing a movie. You know what I'm saying? Writing a screenplay. How do you find the time to do all this I was in a box, Chris. At that time, what I had... It, that time I had probably like three years in the box or some crazy shit. But that's shit. still dedication and focus. Oh, yeah. Nah, you got to be focused to do that shit because you do it every day. One thing about writing and writing a book or writing a movie or anything like that, you got to do it every day because you'll lose a lot when you don't go back to it. Right. Even if you write a line, yo, even if you just sit there and you fucking look at that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? To keep it fresh. So when you sleep and you, you know what I mean? All of these things play out in a person that a lot of people don't understand. When you mm-hmm. when you lay, a lot of things, your brain is cooking, yo. Even while you're sleeping, your brain is cooking. Your brain is cooking. It never so you stops. think my brain ain't cooked these stories? You know no. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I had to wake up and say, yo, fuck that. Yo, you know what she did and he did it. Uh, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Out of nowhere. Man, that's that's fire. Thank you, brother. That's fire. That's fire. But it takes a lot of time. I know that for sure. And then, nah. <clears throat> so what's the next step that Ever is trying to get into? The next step? I know you spoke to my brother. Let's talk about that because you talked to my brother about, or he he asked you about a story and you wrote it already, I yeah, believe. Yeah, Irv, Irv is, Irv got his, his tales, his tales thing going on. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, Irv. And he just got the funding for like television shows and movies and everything from the when he sold the masters. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he has the funding. So two hundred million dollars. I, 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 I was I was able to, you know, cross paths with him and and, and talk to him. Like, yeah. you know, Irv, you know, I know you need content. You know what I'm saying? That's I right. know how to write. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like, you know how to write. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, he looked at me crazy, like, what are you talking about? But he said, yo, you know, you write an episode, what you want to write? And I told him I wanted to write something for Tales. I ain't going to say what it is, but right. he said, yo, you put that work in, and we're going to see what's going on. So say I said, less. I right, bet. You know nah, I mean? when you, once you have it completely finished, is it all done? Oh, yeah. Now, nah, I wrote that. All right. So then I'm going to get it. That. I'm going to get on, it to I'm Irv. on it. Like, I was on it. I was on it. When Irv, Irv, you hear me? When it's Irv coming. said that to me. It's coming, boy. Yo, listen, Chris. When he said that to me, he sparked some shit in me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I left him, mm-hmm. and I kind of cut everybody the fuck off for two weeks. <laughs> Straight up and down. So it took you two weeks to write it? Yeah, it took me two weeks so to what, write it. Now, this is just an episode, 40-minute episode or... Right, an hour I, show. I, I was I was going for the two hour special. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was going for the big thing here. Yeah, you know what got I'm saying? you. I, he, he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me yeah. a time. He just said, "Hey, put it together, F. Make sure it's dope." I said, "All right, yeah, let's do it." I get DMs all the time about people that write and want me to give them that opportunity. The see, there's only one issue, right? Mm-hmm. See. We have a relationship, so and Irv spoke to you directly. The issue is when I deal with strangers, 
in the past, we had had issues with people saying, oh, that was what I was trying to tell you and you went out and did it. So it, it becomes a problem to really truly empower somebody. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they, let's say the story, let's use a Tales episode that's out already, which is Fuck the Police. Right. Let's say I had 10 people DM me from all over the country, all over the world, different people don't know each other about the same topic. But they didn't realize Irv already had the topic, maybe. I'm just using this as an example, not using this saying this happened, because it did not. But I'm just explaining, and this became, like, this is why it's an issue, because then once we go out and do it, and Irv already had it, mm -hmm. without reading one DM or anything, he already had it in his brain, they're looking at it like, Wait a minute, I gave you that. That's mine. Oh, uh, yeah. And that stops me from really empowering people yeah. in that way anymore because I can't take the run the risk that he's already got everything developed and going. And what's the likeliness of you picking the same song? It's not too hard. Right. Right? A hot song is all we're looking for. Like, he's, he does those shows on, and that is an issue. You have to come through the right channels or it won't, we can't just take random you're right. coming through the right channel that's what i'm saying but yeah because i did I, you I, spoke to the source directly you spoke to irv not and, me and don't get it twisted i spoke to irv before that yeah and he told me no you know what i'm saying oh see and that's even more now he said he opened up right he was like, in, hey, he, he was he in a good mood and, 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 yeah and he didn't even <laughs> and he didn't even say a full year at first he just looked at me like what yeah. And I'm like, yo, did I ask you this before? Like, come and on. And he probably didn't even remember. Nah, he's looking at me. I'm like, because yo, we was on what, tour, dogs. When I asked people you, are yo. focused, when you when I am truly focused, people talk to me and I forget because mm. I'm engulfed in what I'm doing, not because I'm being disrespectful right. or not paying attention. And Irv has that at the a thousand power. Like, if I have it at one power, he's at a thousand power with that forgetting what someone might have said to him. He's that tunnel vision and focused on what he's doing. And he forgets, so he probably don't even remember he had that conversation, then he does it again. It'll hit home. The more he does it, the more it's like resonates inside him because it's part of what he's remembering now. So you got to follow up. You got to stay on him. And like I said, I'll get him the script. As soon as you get it to me, I'll get it to him. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 all, I'm all there. Listen, I don't play no games, Chris. When it comes to this writing thing, I know I'm I'm like a creative. Irv told me to write that. I wrote that in 12 days. I'm talking about I came up with the locations, the the characters, Every what detail. they're gonna look like, what's going on. I spoke to somebody about this, about that. You know, All I know details. how to I know how to, you know, move my brain around. Right. You know what I'm saying? To shake it up. You know what I mean? Drive around. You know what I'm saying? I know how to shake that shit up and get the story out. So that's what I did. Nah, that's what's up. He's always looking for writers, though, for real, for real. Yeah. Like, because writing in Hollywood is everything. Yeah. Those writers are the money. They the ones that create these shows. Right. They the ones that create all of these different uh, movies. And you need constant, you know, Hollywood is like broke to me. It's broken, meaning they only regurgitate all this yeah, old shit. shit right? Yeah, they not, who's coming up with these things? That's why I'm interested when you say you came up with a fantasy book, because that's, that's, uh, what's different. his name? Come on, George, who made Star Wars? Oh, George, yeah, George, George Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. All fantasy. Right, yeah. yeah. That's why he made all that fucking money. Right. Right? All I'm, fantasy. I'm telling you, I need a publicist, Avatar. man. We can get money, man. We you can do this. You know, there's so this. many movies that that is just fantasy. Mm-hmm. And they big. They and use. like these are the out of someone's brain, just something different. And then Hollywood bought into it, but they don't have a lot of that. That's really worth anything. If you come up with something like that, it's really that big. I mean, Chris, when I came up with this idea, I looked at the characters as being toys in McDonald's, yo. That's the next part of it. You know what I'm saying? That like that's how deep I went into that book. When I sat there and I wanted to create that, I said, "Yo, these characters could be so dope yeah. that people will buy them as toys." They will. You know what I'm saying? Shit, McDonald's could sell anything. You, you feel what I'm saying? Put it in a Happy Meal. It's out of here. 
<laughs> and I own all the rights for the books. Ooh wee. You know what I'm saying? Now you talking about that shit right there. I am a real independent artist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, that's dope shit. That's you, dope. So what's next after that? Um, after that, uh, we're gonna try to um get something going on the uh series tip. You know when you say series, like a TV series? Yeah, like a TV series. You know what I mean? I want to get it very you wanna, involved You want to make The that. Wire? Well, Something nah, like that? Nah, nah, it don't have to be uh, on some street gangster shit. I'm just you know saying, what I'm saying, it's a series, though. Oh, yeah, nah. I, I got... I got Seinfeld. I, I got, Is that better? I got, I got stuff... Nah, you wanna do, I don't want to do the, Steinfeld. Why you know not? I mean? Seinfeld is monstrous. I, I, need, I need action. How about Friends? Friends. Ah, well, you know. I mean, Fresh Prince. Those was huge. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Martin. I, 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 oh, Martin, classy. Classy. Martin is the best TV series ever, ever yo. Ever, ever. Like, you know they, what's crazy? They, had they run, man. Man, Martin, you killed it, yo. Yeah, man. I watch that shit to this day. That's only TV I watch. I don't watch TV. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the shows I watch on TV. It's late in the night. BT has the run of it. And it's Martin. I will watch Fresh Prince. And the Wayne's brothers and Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx, damn. Bad, those are the man. only episodes, the only Word. shows I look for to watch. And you know, those are all the shows that I was jammed up having to watch. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had no choice. I had no choice. It's but the only to thing watch on the box in the TV and room. Over and over again. <laughs> so this is why. Hey, maybe, you know what? See what you just said? Boy. Maybe we need to do a study, a case study in that. Because of the crack era, is that the right time frame? Yeah, I'm and, a part and of all that. of the I'm people, all the that. incarcerations, mass incarceration that happened, that they was inside, and these are the shows they popularly made popular and yeah. watched because they was they had no other choice. Yeah, no choice, yo. Like half of them jails, you didn't even have. Man, that's an like interesting that. concept to look into because of that time frame. Because that's the crack era. And everyone was getting locked up with football numbers, and they couldn't come home. So mm -hmm. they're sitting there, and they got to watch Martin and all those shows. Yeah, that's crazy. It's well. a different, you know. It's another perspective. I'm a big believer that hip hop culture, our culture, starts from the inside out. Mm. Is that crazy? I believe that the incarcerated people from our culture creates all the trends and, and things like that. Tells someone, and it comes from that to outside. I know all the slang words and everything. Yeah, nah, you know, when you see people sagging their pants, that's all inside stuff. Yeah, nah, that's yeah. from inside. Yeah, It's not from out here. So I always looked at that. That's why it's very interesting to say that the effect that incarceration had on these TV shows. You know, they have what they call um, the Bill Cosby effect. When the Cosby show, the Cosby effect, they did this case study. Mm. Black people started graduating and going to college at a higher level than ever before because of the Cosby show. Yeah, I remember. I remember because they promoted so much HBCUs in there and she's going to Howard and he's going there. They yes. had a lot of that. And, and, All and plus, it. plus, it's uh, the first time you seen. Was, uh, the, he, was, he was the doctor and she hey, was the lawyer. It was almost you know fantasy. Hey, that was almost a fantasy land. <laughs> <laughs> Two black women in Brooklyn, living, in living, in best I living yeah. like that, a doctor and a no, lawyer, yeah. and, and, all and a great kids, family. And you get to do what you want to do. Fuck out of here. Who dreamed this shit up? <laughs> yeah, but but we believed it. You know what I'm saying? I remember me and my sister sitting back watching that shit every day. Like, no, but wow. think about it. Like, and then there's a you know from an effect, a cause and effect standpoint. I really, I wanted someone to do the Kardashian effect. And as crazy as it sounds, the, the things that they have created in this country be, from their growth and development mm -hmm. is fucking, woo. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Yeah. And I, I, I could sit there and say they made interracial shit way, way more acceptable than ever before mm. because of the Kardashian effect. The, fa the asses, yeah. you can't yeah. tell me. That they didn't make all of these, what are they, BBLs? Is that what they call? BBW. <laughs> BBL, no, BBW is a big body woman or something, right? The mm. BBL is that lift, the big booty oh, lift. Oh, the lift? Oh, yeah, yeah, they made the lift famous. They made the lift, <laughs> not famous, huge. Yeah. Huge. Over the top. 
And I say and no one does the Kardashian effect because I look at these young girls today and the way they get their makeup, their hair, everything, their asses, their tits, is looking like Kim and, and her whole family over there yeah. and Kylie. You know, Kylie's a billionaire off of this shit. Yeah. They parlayed this shit into billions. Yeah. Nah, Shout out to the Kardashians and the, and the Jenner family for, for killing this shit like that. But again, they have an effect mm -hmm. on the, the culture on of the culture. these girls, these young girls, and, and what's going on. And it's crazy. But definitely, I, I, that's a great um, topic or understanding when you mentioned you had to watch it. While you was inside, yeah, you had to watch. So it. imagine how many other people imagine had to being watch. Being in it. a jail and you got the TV in your cell. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and it only has three fucking channels. Yeah, it only has three channels, yeah. right? And imagine what those channels are. <laughs> you got a uh, one. It was Fox. Yeah, Fox Five. So today uh, is different. Yeah, nah. Today they they. Probably, they, they I don't know. It, they I mean, they, 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 yeah, yeah, because I've been home for a I'm while. I'm going to tell you why they I've got I've been home cable. for a while, so yeah. My documentary, the Murder, Inc. documentary with me and my brother just came out on BT five-part series, and I got so many calls mm -hmm. from from my boys inside saying that the jail was on froze. Yeah, now, they BT, said, we all had BT. No, listen to me. They said everybody's in that room watching that Damn documentary, five, every episode, it was like the hottest shit in jail. Yeah. I, again, anyone, BT this, is in anyone there. that watches BT this. BT and the Spanish channel is the two banging his channels in there, man. All right. That's why they <laughs> love, <laughs> hey, now. that's why they love tales. Yeah. Because yeah. Irv, Irv pushes the limits to the scenes as far as sex scenes and things of that nature. Right. So inside, they loving it. Yeah, they Because they get shit. as much as flesh is seen as possible without, you know, the being... Not able to be on a BT. Yeah, yeah. Irv pushes that envelope every time because that's our culture. Well, this wait till wait till they see the joint that I wrote for Tales. You Woo! know what I'm saying? Wait till you see that joint. Let's yeah. see how we going with that. Man, mm -hmm. I want to wish you all the luck and success, man. Thank you, you very deserve much, it, yo. And you, the work you put in, I watch you work. I watch yeah. all the things you do, and I mean. I appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you. you. If I never said it, and I know I did, though, but I'm going to say it on air, so it's now you can never act like I never said it. Are <sighs> you going to be it's stuck with this one? <sighs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Nah, thank you, And man. again, real always wins. I'm hoping real and praying that that's wins. real. You can, get, you can get whatever you need from my link tree. It's uh, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash... Everdamo, which is E V E R D O M O. And on there, we have the link to my books. We have the link to apparel. We have the link to all the videos that we make and uh, documentaries that we filmed. And oh, also, we have a podcast. It's called Let Me Tell You a Story Podcast. Let me Before tell you. I go. Before I go, let me tell you a story podcast is a book podcast, all right? That podcast is where we release a chapter of our books as, as an episode, yes. So you get to listen to the chapter of the book Fire. on there. And we're going to have um, one, one joint that's just the whole book. Right. So you can listen to it straight. It's going to be long. They're long. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about 20 plus hours, but it's on Spotify and it's on Apple and on Anchor and Google and Dope stuff concept. like that. Thank you. Like Dope concept. we've been we've been running with that for some months, and we got Journey to Kingdom Soul up there. We got Cabin Love, which is written by Latoya Monique, published by Everdamo Media, and we got Real Always Wins coming up on there and we Say got some real always real wins. always wins and we got some poems from um <laughs> from a poem song up there to, up there too so All if you right, like to listen to poetry we got some up there too your old book rhyme uh, a rhyme a the book old book of rhymes book nah. of rhymes now nah, that that old book of rhymes i think i gave that to my son man Oh man, I hope I he ain't saying some. those words, man. Nah, he does. He, he's not even a creative man. He's yeah. not even. He you looks at him and he's like, nah. You don't want to do it. Nah, How old is he? He's twenty seven, twenty eight now. He's a gener. What's that generation? That's a. That's a. Um. 
what is his generation? Not Z. He's a millennial. Millennial? Yeah, he's right. a millennial. Yeah, well, he doesn't want to do none of this stuff that I do. <laughs> <laughs> all good. I know he's going to shoot me for saying that. It's but all hey, good. Man. Hey, let him join. Sometimes, you know, they got to walk their own path. Yeah. They got to walk their own journey. Nah, it's all good. That's hey, listen. Fact. It's, it's all, all good. good. It's all good. But I want to thank you again for coming on. Real always wins. Go get thank the you. book. Everybody support this independent artist. This is how we got to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I want to thank everyone for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Keep it up. We're doing great. Giving them the business podcast. This is Chris Gotti Lorenzo, my partner, Don De Niro, que voila, who's not here with me. He's moving his book, too. The Formula. Go the cop formula. it. Independent artist. Please, you know what I'm saying? Keep everything moving, man. I love you. Thank you.